what's up i'm troubleshoot welcome back to another quick video in this quick guide i'll be showing you how to set up a spigot or craft bucket server and host it on your own computer completely for free using your own hardware you can have as many friends as you want to join etc it's all completely yours to play around with and host yourself to begin i'd usually say head across to the craft bucket or spigot download website and download the spigot build tools essentially we're downloading a program to build ourselves a server jar file for either spigot and or craft bucket but that process can be a little bit confusing so i've gone ahead and automated it through the use of a really simple one-line install script these do take a bit of time to create and of course may have more time to maintain so if you find these useful make sure to click the thanks or join button down below now, you may be asking, why don't I just point you to a download for a server jar file? Well, you can do that, but usually they're filled with viruses, malware, etc. As currently, the Spigot and Craft Bucket team are not able to share jar files that they create themselves under Minecraft's EULA and LAW. If you download a jar file for one of these from a different source, it's completely up to you whether you choose to use it or not. If you do, you can skip past this build tools section of the video where I'll be showing you how you can build it yourself. Yourself. It is only one command, but it'll take around five minutes to build. Anyways, without further ado, how do we do it? Well, on Windows 11, open up Terminal as Administrator. Otherwise, on Windows 10, or if you don't see Terminal, open up PowerShell as Admin instead. Now, if you open up the Terminal, make sure you see PowerShell at the very top. Otherwise, click the drop down and choose Windows PowerShell. Now that we're all in the same place, let's go ahead and run IEX space and inside of brackets, IRM spigot.tc.ht and close brackets. Brackets. You'll find this down in the description below. This install script is completely open source and transparent, so you can see everything that it does start to finish. When we hit enter, it'll give us a troubleshoot Spigot MC installer header, and shortly after, it'll ask us where we'd like to place all of these temporary files. Currently, it's telling me it'll put them here, but I don't want to. So I'll go ahead and create a folder on my desktop called Spigot. I'll open it up, and inside of here, I'll click at the very top, select all of the text that's here, right click copy, and in the console, right click to paste we'll get it to set up in this folder here i'll hit enter and shortly after it'll go ahead and download the build tools jar file here and check to see if you have java installed if you don't java will be installed and handled for you now it'll ask you do you want to build craft bucket as well spigot is the only one that's built by default if you'd like it choose y and hit enter otherwise type n or just press enter without typing anything to not build a craft bucket only spigot now this is where things will take a little bit longer to set up it'll go ahead and download a few programs and start building but eventually this will finish in about 10 minutes or so it really depends on the speed of your computer and your internet now if you'd like to change this and get craft bug to build later you can run the same command choose y and as long as you leave all of these extra files here the build process should be a ton quicker all right so now that it's done it'll open up our folder here and it'll also tell us everything's done opening this folder in explorer awesome so if we close our terminal now you'll see spigot 120.jar this is exactly what we're looking for as well as a start.bat file that i added here just to make life a little bit simpler for you it's already got some information on starting our spigot server awesome so all we need to do is copy these two files here wherever we'd like to set up our server or of course you can just delete the rest of these files if you don't want to update it or rebuild it in the future i'll make a spigot 120 folder on my desktop as such and move them in here now we're ready to start setting up our our server in order to begin i'll just double click start.bat otherwise you can open it up with notepad and customize exactly what's happening such as for example you can change xmx 2g to add more ram by making it 4g 6g however much ram you have available in your system eventually it will error out and tell you about eula.txt press any key to continue and reopen eula.txt where inside of it will be changing eula false to eula true Control s and close it now we can run the start dot bat file once more and it'll go ahead and start building our server as well as all of the required folders for plugins etc eventually it'll actually get to starting up on port 25565 the default awesome there we go now of course you can place your plugins in the plugins folder here and customize your server as you see fit but for now let's go ahead and actually connect to it for this i'll open up minecraft we can use minecraft 1.20 or minecraft 120 with client side mods whatever you'd like 
it is still somewhat a vanilla server, Craft Bucket and Spigot are different from Forge and Fabric, and that the mods are only really added on top of the vanilla game instead of replacing huge elements of it, usually. All right, there we go. All I'll do is select maybe Optifine 1.20. If you'd like to see how to install this or anything else, you'll find links down below, and I'll go ahead and play it. There we go. I'll head to multiplayer, and all we need to do to connect to our own server is add a server, and in the server address, type in 127.0.0.1, otherwise known as localhost. This is our own computer. Now, if I connect to it, we'll be connecting to our Spigot server in the background, and here we are. And in order to give ourselves admin privileges, we can type in op space tzno, which is my username, so op space your username, and just like that, you'll have admin on the server, so you can type in game mode C, for example, or game mode creative, and you'll be in creative mode as such. Super simple. Now, you're playing on your own server, but how do other people play on your server? Well, it is usually very simple, but instead of going through the Windows firewall and trying to manage things there manually, I've automated it through the use of four simple commands you can run, which you'll also find in the description down below. It'll add an exception for port 25565, both in and out to your firewall. Do note if you're using a third-party antivirus firewall or something along those lines, you will need to go ahead and add an exception for 25565 there as well. So pulling up our guide over here in the description down below, you'll find these four commands. Simply click the copy button next to it and inside of an administrative PowerShell or terminal window once more. So I'll open terminal as admin and then select PowerShell if not already selected. All we need to do is right click to paste in these commands here. And just like that, it'll add four exceptions to our firewall. Just hit enter a few times to make sure everything has run. Now someone sitting next to me connected to the same router should be able to connect to our server here simply by going to their multiplayer list, adding a server, and typing in the local IP of my computer here. In order to get this, you can open up a terminal window or command prompt once again, and type in ipconfig one word and hit enter. This will tell us all of the information about our computer's network connections. We'll look for the way that we're connected to the internet. In my case, it's ethernet. You're looking for IPv4 address. This one here is what people will use to connect to my computer on the same router. 192.168 something something. I'll be copying this with a right click after selecting it and we can paste it into our server address bar here. Otherwise your friend can type it in or other device etc. I'll click done and just like that we should be able to connect to our Minecraft server just by double clicking on it as per usual. Awesome. So what about people outside of our local network connecting to our server to play with us? Well that's a little bit more advanced. It involves port forwarding but don't worry before you get worried about it. Port forwarding is super simple. It just sounds scary, and in the description down below you'll find a full guide on how to port forward Minecraft that should really break it down and make it simple, and I've even got a guide there showing you how to port forward if you have more than one router between you and the internet. Essentially, when someone tries to connect to your PC, it's led straight in, but if they reach your router or internet router on the way to your computer, say they're connecting to your computer from outside of your local network, they'll be blocked by the router's security settings. Port forwarding simply allows port 25565 through the router and it'll tell it exactly where to go on your local network so someone connecting to you from afar will be redirected straight to your computer and they'll be able to join your server as you'd hope. Now of course when you're done playing around how do you save and close your server? Head to your console, type in save hyphen all and hit enter. This will save the world and everything in it then type in stop close your server gracefully. It's important to type stop instead of closing it outright as if you do it may cause corruption and data loss things like that not very fun. Just a quick note that once you have closed your server, people won't be able to reconnect to it until you reopen it as you are hosting it on your own hardware. As long as it's open, people should be able to connect and play. That's why it's completely free because it's using your hardware and nobody else's. That's really about it for this super quick guide. So I hope you found this interesting. Money's been Troubleshoot. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.